Good morning, America. Thanks for joining us here on the Andy Kirkendall Show, where Andy interviews actors, writers, filmmakers, athletes, musicians, songwriters, and more, and asks them, what do you do and why do you do it? So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy the show. Good morning and welcome to Morning Moment Message. Today's message is entitled, I Will Cut You. That line is used sometimes by comedians. Sometimes that line is used in a, in a joking way. And other times, mess with me and I will cut you. Today, I want to talk about a different kind of cutting, not, not with a knife. Uh, Proverbs 18.21 says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. You know, the words we speak is a spiritual gauge showing how much our soul has really surrendered to God. It, from, the, from our mouth speaks what's been in our heart. And there are times when we use sharp words it shows a lack of submission to what god has had has for us and it's it's easy to do if we're not careful jesus tells us that that a life is cons- that is life that is consumed of tr- the treasures of this world and the cares of this world will lead to fruitless talks and will bring judgment upon us but a life of surrender will, will produce speech full of love, mercy, grace, and peace. Hebrews 11.3 tells us, By faith we understand that the, the entire universe was formed at God's command, and we, what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It's the power of God's word. God's words can speak into existence a world that wasn't there before. Entire universe can be spoken into being by the word of of the creator. He communicates through us through the Bible, and with his thousands of words, he reveals himself. John 1.1 tells that the the, the, that Jesus is actually the living, breathing word of God. And Jesus, God made flesh when he was on earth, re- responded in Matthew 8, 26, when it says, Jesus responded, why are you afraid? You are, you have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves. And suddenly there was a great calm. The spoken words of Jesus calm the storm. In John eleven forty three and 44, Jesus said, when he said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the man who is dead came out. Oh, oh, the power of the word of God and the power of God's word for us. But oh, the power that our words have over other people. It's an issue of, of controlling what, our, our, what we say. Some of the greatest hurts and, and heartaches that, that come from people uh, have come from the words that have said some of our greatest memories, uh, positive things, or even negative things come from people who we trust and love, family, and the words they say. The phrase, I love you, can, can make so much difference in the life of people, especially of children growing up. See, when we speak the words of life, I love you, you're such a blessing. You look good. I see potential in you. You're so thoughtful. You can do it. You did your best. I forgive you. 
I'm committed to you. Life is better because of you. You're so smart. When you say those words, you create life in people. But those, uh, those same lips and those same tongue that speaks words of encouragement can cut like a knife. I will cut you. Words of death. I hate you. I wish you'd never been born. You're ugly. You, you'll never amount to anything. You're selfish. You're stupid. You should have, shouldn't even tried. You're a failure. You fail, failure. I want a divorce. Uh, I never want to see you again. You were a mistake. It's those words that change lives and cut to the core. Are, are we speaking life into the people around about us or, or are we speaking death? Just because you can say things doesn't mean you should. It's those words that can cut deep, deep, deep. We need to guard our hearts from that. We need to tame our tongue. But now we also rid ourselves of such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from our lips, Colossians 3, 8. We must decide what are the things going to come out of our mouth? Are we speaking life? Are we taking our knife, knife-like tongue and say, I will cut you and cutting people? It doesn't hurt to be kind. It doesn't hurt to encourage and lift people up. Let the cutting be done by the word of God, which is sharper than a two-edged sword. And let the Holy Spirit speak through you through his word and prune us like a sharp knife rather than us with our own power, taking our own knife and cutting others and, and discouraging people. Just a few words for us to think about. So don't go around telling people I'm going to cut you and cut them with your words. Be an encourager. Pass this message on. Tell others about how about Christ and be an encouragement to them, if you would, please. Keep coming back. May God richly bless you.